I tell the FBI to go fuck themselves because I'm not going to betray my partner. It's me and him. We don't care about the FBI. We're going to get out of that bank, we're going to get on the plane, and we're going to do what we have to do without hurting anybody. Because we're the real Americans, not them. It's 28 years now that I've been fighting Warner Brothers trying to get my movie money back. Instead, they keep giving it to the hostages, and I'm a millionaire living on welfare. And then they go, how come you don't commit another crime? My name is John S. Waterwitz. I'm the real Sonny Warzik. And I'm the one that you see in Dog Day Afternoon. Okay, Sal, I'm going to give you the note. You go and you give it to the bank manager, right? Make sure he doesn't use the phone. Make sure he doesn't press any alarms. Okay, you, the bank manager, go sit over there. Put your hand on the phone, but don't pick it up. Girls, I want you to get up. I want you to get behind the counter. Make believe you're counting money. Okay, the bank guard I need over here. Okay, you're the FBI guy, out. Go hide somewhere. Okay, hand me the shotgun. Okay, come on, Sal. Tell him to take his hand off the phone. Take your hand off the phone. Okay, hand him the bank note. Okay, keep the gun on him. Tell the bank guard to stand behind you. Stand here, good luck. Okay, just act normal, count your money. Okay, the reason that I'm in this bank robbery is because Bobby ran out and chickened out and wouldn't give him the note, so now Sal had to give him the note. And now I have to get into the bank robbery to save Sal's life. Okay, this is a stick up. Okay, girls, raise your hands, take a giant step back. Step back, raise your hands slowly. Let me see them, let me see them. Don't touch any alarms. Anybody touches any alarms, I'll blow your brains out. Now lower your hands slowly. Don't move, but try to act natural. Before we went to rob the bank, what you don't know in the movie is that we went to see The Godfather because it had just come out in New York for the first time, and that was August 22nd, 1972. So to inspire the troops, which was Bobby and Sal and also myself, we went to 42nd Street in Times Square, and we watched Marlon Brando and Al Pacino in The Godfather. And that's where I got the idea for the note. This is an offer you can't refuse, sign the gang. And everybody thought that was great. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the bank manager go over, open up the door so I can get $600,000. But what he's going to do is he's going to fuck up and use the fake key, which is going to set off the emergency alarm and then I'm gonna have to kill everybody in the bank. What the fuck's the matter with you? All right, now take out the right key. That one right there. Okay, now put it in. So I stop him and I make him use the real key, make him open the door and then go in and get the money. When I went in the vault, I was supposed to get $600,000 out of this vault. But instead of getting $600,000, there was only almost $200,000 because the armored car came early and took the money. Hey, let's go. Come on, get out of here. That's all there is. The cops keep trying to provoke us, okay? In the real movie, the cops fire on us and we have to shoot back at them. Okay, now I'm out on the sidewalk and I see the cop car. There are two cops in it, double parked, and they're not smiling, so I know I'm in a lot of trouble. So I take the shotgun out of the package, right? I click it, I lean over the car, and I tell the two cops to stand up. Instead of standing up, they start laughing. I go, why are you laughing? And then I look up and I see cops all over the place, across the street, in the windows, on the roofs, cops coming around this way, cops coming around that way. So I'm going, oh man, what a day I got here. Now the sergeant from around the corner comes around, stops right there, he points the shotgun at me, and he tells me, if I make a move, I'll blow your fucking brains out. Okay, say it. You make a move, I'll blow your fucking brains out. Okay, at this time, 
I have the gun on the police car and on the two cops. And I said, if you shoot me, my reflex will kill the two cops. So he goes, I don't care about the two cops. So he goes, I don't care about the two cops. Drop the shotgun, you lousy cocksucker, or I'll blow your brains out. I don't care about the two cops. Drop the gun, you lousy cocksucker, or I'll blow your fucking brains out. Okay, now at this time, I forget about the cops, I forget about everything else. I put the shotgun down on the sidewalk, and I turn around, and I say to the sergeant, who are you calling a lousy cocksucker? I'm a good cocksucker. And if you're a man, you'll put down that shotgun and walk toward me. But he won't walk toward me. So I start walking to him, and then he says to me the words, if you make one more step, I'll kill you. Say the words. You take one more step, I'll kill you. Oh, yeah? Come on, motherfucker. I take the one step, he blows a hole in the ground in front of me. Okay? And I said, oh, you think you're bad, don't you? Well, I'm badder than you, because I'm going to get you your fucking mind. Then he says, take another step and you're dead. Say it. Take another step and you're dead. I'm dead, huh? Well, motherfucker, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. You're fucking dead. And now the other cops come. They take the shotgun away from him. They grab him, and they take him in the store. Then I run back this way to get my shotgun, and a hostage runs out and says to me, Sal's going to kill all the hostages. And that's why nobody can shoot me, because then the hostages will all be dead. So I pick up my shotgun, I run back in the bank, and I tell Sal, don't shoot them yet. The FBI said they had orders from Washington to waste us. And that was probably because we cut Nixon off a TV in the middle of his presidential debate. But it wasn't really a debate, it was his nomination. He was nominated for a second term in Miami Beach, and he didn't like the idea that they cut the president off and put the gay bank robber into the scene. So the FBI shuts off the lights and electricity because they want to show they're in control. And that's why I have to take control again. I want you to remember one thing. Once we walk out that door, we're making history. No matter where you go, no matter who sees you, your family, your friends, they're going to remember this day, August 22nd, 1972. And they'll say, that's the woman. That's the man. They went out, they got in the van, they went to the airport, and they left the country. And while we're at Kennedy Airport, my partner gets out of the van with the hostages and tries to get on the plane, and that's when they open up on us. They grab me firing out the back of the van. They grab him firing in the front of the van after they open up on him and the hostages. As I'm firing, they grab my rifle, and they pull me out of the van. They grab him. They take his grenades from him, right? They bring me back around in front with him, all right? And two agents take him in the van and hold him. Then the driver reaches back, takes the gun away from the FBI agent on the right side, puts it in Sal's chest and murders him in cold blood. Then they try to put me in the van, but I'm kicking and screaming and I'm not going in there. And then the Port Authority cops who had me said, you're not killing him like you killed a kid. He's our prisoner. Then the FBI pulls out their guns and says, we got orders from Washington to kill him. And they tell him, you're not killing him. He's our prisoners. So the Port Authority cops pull out their guns. And then they take me, they put me in a car, and they drive me off. And that's it.